Welcome to Briggs Gymnasium as TSC Television proudly presents high school girls basketball. Today at the last regular season game between these two teams, Trinity at River Ridge and St. Paul Academy. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Peden here with Michael Johnson. And Michael, this is a very big game for both teams. The last game before sections. So how do they prepare knowing on Thursday it's one and done? Mike, it's, uh, it's an exciting game for actually for both teams to get a chance to have one final tune-up before sections begin. St. Paul Academy is hosting their first section game in many years. I'm sure the same might be said for Trinity as well. So it's an opportunity to fine tune and get ready for the playoffs. Both schools in different divisions in this section, but they could play each other if they get through those first few rounds. Trinity and River Ridge, led by Gross, having an up and coming year at 10 and 12. And so how do you think they will try to attack St. Paul Academy? Mike, I think St. Paul Academy is prepared for whatever Trinity throws at them. Playing in the Tri-Metro Conference against teams like Providence and De La Salle, some of the top teams in the state, has prepared them to play at a high level. So whatever Trinity throws at them, they should be ready. And for St. Paul Academy, it's senior night. They were honored before the game. That includes folks like Jenna O'Brien and Maggie Johnson. So a big core leading this group. How will that help them guide through this game? I think St. Paul Academy, they're going to be starting five seniors. One of them will come out of the game, actually, with she's got a knee injury, Io Jones. But St. Paul Academy has veteran leadership. They've got four seniors in the starting lineup. Uh, one of their players, Lauren Adamite, went down with a, an ankle injury last game. So they're going to be looking for other underclassmen to step it up this game. Keys to the game and starting lineups are coming up shortly. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Welcome back. Here are the starting lineups. We'll begin with the visiting Trinity School at River Ridge. Ruth Gross, number 11, gets the start, along with Kelly Kuplick, number 14, Hannah Lewisell, number 20, Abby Brummer, number 24, and number 34, Becky Fears. St. Paul Academy starting Marley Applebaum, I believe, number five at guard. No, wait, she's a freshman. Let's try that again. Erica Miller will get the start at senior number 12. Io Jones, as you mentioned, coming in, will be taken out uh, because of the injury at number 13, so it's a symbolic start for her. Maggie Johnson, number 20 at four. Jenna O'Brien, number 21 at forward. And Barry Applebaum, number 14 at guard. I got the starters this time. Ruth Gross and Jenna O'Brien will be the key matchup in terms of leading scores. Gross fourth in the Minnesota Christian Athletic Association in that category. Jenna O'Brien leading the Tri-Metro East and fifth overall in the conference. And Michael, you mentioned uh, Maggie Johnson, one of the longest tenured players in terms of games starting for the Spartans. Yes, your mic's on. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, actually, Mike, you're right. Maggie has started every game since her sophomore year. So it's been um, quite a run for her. And this is uh, one of the final games she'll be playing. They'll get at least one more game, of course, as we mentioned. This is the last game before section play. So no elimination on the line here. But things get interesting on Thursday. Both teams know who they'll play at that point. Did you mention St. Paul Academy hosting Mounds Park Academy? They met earlier this season. And Trinity hosting Columbia Heights. Mounds Park, the eight, or St. Paul Academy, the eighth seed. Trinity, the seventh seed. Both in different divisions, so they would have to get through the first few rounds in order to play against each other. And Trinity has possession. Again, A.O. Jones will not be in there for long. As soon as there's a dead ball, she will be subbed out. And scoring the first basket is number 24. That is Abby Brummer, and Anna Voltmer will call a timeout so she can sub out I.O. Jones and get someone who has fresher legs. Yeah, Mike, I figured that would happen. You know, when you, you start someone that is not going to play, um, she was, wasn't able to get back on defense, and they took advantage of it and scored. Well, if you're going to do that, do it on the first possession and not at the last possession when there's a victory on the line, I suppose? Absolutely. Brummer scored the first basket for Trinity at River Ridge. They're wearing the white jerseys. And St. Paul Academy wearing the blue jerseys. And going in her place is number 45, Alexis Irish, the freshman.
St. Paul Academy with possession now. There's Jenna O'Brien. She didn't get playing time last year because of an injury. Came back this year, scored her 1,000th career point earlier this season. There's Maggie Johnson at the top of the key. We're just underway here in the first half. It looks like Trinity's right now in a man-to-man -man defense, so we'll see how SBA attacks this. They don't have a big inside presence, so they're relying on their outside shooting. And Maggie Johnson can give them some. Kicks out to Erica Miller. Her three-pointer is off target. And Trinity does save it. It was very close to the line. Becky Fears gets it off to Hannah Lewisell. Trinity at 10 and 12. They're coming off an 18-point loss to Humboldt. Getting the mid-range J is Ruth Gross. That's a nice jump shot. Trinity up 4-0. I did speak with John Kaflish, their head coach in his first season. Miller will try again. Long two off the rim. Rebound, Brummer. Trinity, the last few games, they've lost heavily, but they've been shorthanded. As mentioned, they're about five or six deep, and after that, he has to tap into his JV roster, and that has created some problems, including that loss to Humboldt. Again, an 18-point loss, and that was when their star player, Lachey Holt, had an off game, 13.6 rebounds. She normally gets 20 and 20. is playing their man-to-man -man defense, so we'll see if they can shut down Trinity. So far, they are three for three. And Ru Ruth Gross has four of those six points for Trinity at River Ridge. We mentioned Trinity, a Minnesota Christian Athletic Association member. Maggie Johnson works her way inside but can't get the layup. And a traveling call on Brummer. She lost her footing. The SBA looks a little tentative, Mike. They've got to get aggressive here and play their game. See if they can get it going here with this under-the-basket play. Plenty of time, though. 16.01 left in the first half. No need to panic. Maggie Johnson trying again. She's determined to get a basket. Yep, they had an opportunity there, just did not convert. She's not going to give up until she scores, until she gets one in. Here's Erica Miller. She's been off talking the first couple times, still can't find her shot, but she gets her own rebound. Bounce pass to Irish. Yes. There you go, good inside pass. Alexis Irish, she's just a freshman. She's seen a lot of RC minutes this year, Mike. As you mentioned, a couple of these seniors took injuries, Adamite out and Io Jones, so Anna Voltmer has got to go into her younger players. Gross, pull up, short this time, and there's Jenna O'Brien, a varsity member since seventh grade. And we taped a game of hers at that age. There's Maggie Johnson drawing the foul. She'll shoot free throws. And the ball's coming over here, and Gross is going to come pick it up. I thought we were going to have to play for a there moment. There we go. You know, the good news for Lauren Adamite, Mike, is she's just a junior, so she's got another year to come back. No foul was called. So Trinity will get possession, so the clock was clean. There's Gross again. We mentioned Gross averaging about 14 points per game. Over to Hannah Lewisell. She drives left and will shoot free throws. Looks like the foul is on Erica Miller, number 12. It is her first personal. Lewisell, 8.3 points per game coming into this contest. I just love hearing that swish of the net. I spoke with John Kalfish beforehand. One of two is Lewisell. Jump ball, possession arrow favors St. Paul Academy. He said it was a good starting point, getting this team to a playoff spot. Well, a home playoff spot, that hasn't happened in over 10 years. Long way to go, but he likes the direction his school is going in the first season. And for St. Paul Academy, I believe the, the wins haven't been frequent as Irish missed, but I believe their record is better than this point a year ago. Boy, if I was an official there, Mike, I would have called SBA's ball because she stepped right on the line. They missed that, so 
A break for Trinity. Let's see if the Spartans can get a stop. 7-2 in favor of the Hawks. Could be a five-second call right there. Oh, she got it off. Ruth Gross drives in and is short. The St. Paul Academy defense clogged the paint. And it will stay with the Hawks. Little contact between Applebaum and Lewisell, but officials rule it incidental. Into the game now, Hannah Johnson and... Hannah Johnson. Number 33, Dante 35. Claiborne. Yes. Both sophomores. And if I'm correct, hang on, we've got to steal Applebaum on the fast break. You know that's going in. Nice assist by Hannah Johnson. Barry converts, and Spartans within three. And if I'm correct, uh, Hannah Johnson and Maggie Johnson are related? They are cousins. There's another foul. And that will send Lewisell back to the line. She is one of two so far. Black player, two shots. Mike, that foul is on 45. Alexis Irish, her first personal. On the rim, one. And we see the uh, senior banners for their group of five. I remember calling a game last year. We don't have that group here, and I'm a little disappointed. The uh, Briggs Crazies, as they called it. Offensive rebound for Fears as Lewisell missed both. She is one of four from the charity stripe as Trinity still holds a 7-4 lead. Lewisell almost lost it. Uses the dribble. Finds Gross again. Gross, the leader of this team, a senior. And another foul drawn by Trinity. So looks like that was a reach foul by Barry Applebaum, number 14. Just Actually not, it's on Jonte Claiborne. Spartans playing a half step behind on defense. That will send Fears to the line. Well, the only thing keeping the Spartans in this game right now, Mike, is Trinity's lack of free throws. Spartans gotta turn this around. And going back in the game is Erica Miller in place of Alexis Irish. And getting the second is Fears. That puts her on the board. Substitution, Maggie Johnson going back in, giving Applebaum a rest. Now we mentioned St. Paul Academy, Mounds Park Academy playing each other in the first round of the sections. And they met at the Lansing Sports Center earlier this season. That was almost a travel, but no basket for Jonte Claiborne. Nice turnaround bucket by Jenna O'Brien. Spartans within two. That gives her the first basket. I was going to say, how did SPA look against MPA in that first meeting? Actually, the first meeting they won by 13, and they just played about a week ago. And Spartans uh, had a big lead at halftime, let it slip to about six points, and won going away. But I expect a good tight contest when they meet on Thursday. Well, that, it's going to be a tough task for whoever wins that game because uh, Dante Claiborne misses the long jumper and the rebound by Hannah Johnson. Nice follow through. O'Brien over to Johnson, Maggie Johnson that is. Dante Claiborne moves around the block and oh, gets the floater. Nice baseline drive by Dante Claiborne. Big basket for the Spartans. Whoever wins that game between SPA and MPA will play Minnehaha Academy, the number one seed in the section. Not as strong as they were in the last couple of years when they got to the 2A state tournament final, but still a very formidable group led by Josh Thoreau. Gross for three. I think someone got a hand on it. Rebound Hannah Johnson. Here come the Spartans. They have a chance to take their first lead of the game. We're tied at eight all. Claiborne thought about it, goes to Hannah Johnson. She moves around the block, but her left baseline drive is no good. And it's picked up by Kelly Kuplick. Lewisell. Over to Kuplick. 
You don't see the teams pushing too much. They're very patient in their offensive set. O'Brien thought about a three, but passes to the right to Maggie Johnson. A little scramble, and it goes to the hands of John A. Claiborne. Hannah Johnson moves, works around the screen, finds Claiborne on the right wing, moves inside to Miller, and Miller with a little floater, and that could get her confidence going. She missed her first few shots. Mike, Erica, she was 0 for 3 before that. That was a, a nice basket, and she had a great game on Friday night against St. Agnes, uh, season high 18 points. So her confidence is there. We'll see if she can get those good close shots. And the ball uh, is heading out of the court and heading out to the parking lot. Well, not quite. They picked it up in time. But the situation here at Briggs Gymnasium, not a large facility in terms of getting people in these seats. So sometimes the ball heads out and moves out to the commons area. There's a lot of bumping going on under that basket, Mike, but they're letting him play so far. And that's what I like. I like that physical contact. I like it when they let him play. <laughs> let him fight through adversity. Jonte Claiborne with the rainbow, Jay. Big jump shot for Jonte and timeout by Trinity. Nice comeback by the Spartans. 12-8, 10-27 left in the first half and very what was emotional time for these seniors, I imagine, is what was their mindset, their mood as they went into this final game, knowing that after this, they're facing a one and done scenario. Well, Mike, I think they're, they're very excited to um, just to have this final regular season home game and obviously getting another playoff game is a bonus, absolutely for them. And for the players like Jenna O'Brien, I mean, how has she grown over the years? Starting the, on this team since seventh grade, going through a few different coaches. But I forget the name before the person who came, who was there before Anna Voltmer, but going through two different coaches, and here right. she is getting a four digits to her point total. It was Mark Heiser, who Heiser, coached yes. her uh, prior to this, but uh, this season's been special for Jenna because she's healthy, she's played every game, and you know. To be with your friends as a senior is something special, as is scoring a thousand points. Bring it back here to the baseline, blue. And SPA fielded some pretty good teams under Heiser. Again, a similar situation to Voltmer, where you may not have the most talented players, but they had some, they had some athletes back in those days. I think her older sister uh, Maggie was on that team, and she was a stalwart. Yep. They, they definitely had some competitive teams. They had a thousand point score in Niambi Mitchell. Niambi yeah. Mitchell, she was fun to watch. Actually, we, got a, we got a foul against Trinity. I mean, St. Paul Academy, go ahead. Actually, yeah, Niambi was uh, the last thousand point scorer for the Spartans. Where the game I covered, it was against Como Park. And we've got an offensive foul on Trinity off the inbounds play. It's the first time Trinity has been tagged with a foul. And St. Paul Academy with a chance to pad their lead. That was on number 20, Hannah Roussel, I believe. That's what the officials rule, so yep, that's how it will be scored. Trinity's going to come with some full court pressure. We'll see how the Spartans handle it. Now, um, Jenna O'Brien is going to UCLA, if I'm correct. Uh, it's one of her schools she's looking at. So she hasn't quite decided yet. Erica Miller, nice bounce pass from Jenna O'Brien, moving the ball down court, and it pays off. And there's an example of how passing the ball is a lot faster than dribbling. Absolutely. Good Lewis. way to beat the fast break. Lewis Sell off the mark. Offensive rebound for the Hawks. Lewis Sell pull up is short. And Maggie Johnson heading to Boston University? Yep, Maggie's headed to Boston University. So she's one of the five seniors, I think, that knows where they're going. The other four are deciding in the next month or so. Boston University, so how is that going to affect the uh, family trips, you think, in the Johnson clan? Well, looking forward to getting some 
clam chowder on the East Coast, maybe taking in a Red Sox game at Fenway Park. What can be better? You don't plan on moving, do you? No, can't, can't move from this great state of Minnesota. <laughs> Foul is on number 14, Applebaum, her second personal. Lewis Sell back at the line, has struggled from there so far. Just two of five. I say you could move your business over to the Boston area. Do you, know, you think there'd be some space? You never know. <laughs> Well, I'm sure your brother could handle operations here. Lewis Sell now three of six on the line, and that ends the St. Paul Academy run, at least temporarily. Maggie Johnson, a little stutter step, losing the handle, and Miller just saves it before it crosses the out-of-bounds line. A little out of control, gets her own rebound, and that's a great way of turning a broken play into points. I tell you, Erica showed determination. She drove that baseline, missed her shot, but she stuck with it. Beautiful rebound. Six points for Miller. Gross on the left wing. Just over nine minutes remaining in the first half, and St. Paul Academy up 16 to 10. They are on a 14-3 run. Brummer in trouble. You don't see a lot of substitutions from Trinity. Again, not very deep, but under the first year with John Flish, there's a steal by Hannah Johnson. Jenner O'Brien almost lost the handle and establishes control. Maggie Johnson, pull up, short, can't get the bounce. Erica Miller is fouled, going to the free throw line. And a Voltmer in her third season at SPA and knows a thing or two about winning, was a member of, well, went to school at MSU Mankato, a Division II program that won the NCAA Division II championship back in 2009, if I'm correct. I know they won it. I think she was on the team that made it to the Sweet 16, but they, they won it after Right, they she won it after she left. Well, now I figured out what the problem was. No, we're kidding. I'm kidding, Anna. But uh, MSU Mankato fielded some pretty good teams and just goes to show you that even if th these players aren't going to Division I schools, that doesn't necessarily mean they lack skill. Erica Gross missed the J and St. Paul Academy holding a 16-10 lead. Johnson missed both free throws on the last trip. I uh, yes, Irish back in the game. Short. And the rebound went to Fears. Lewisell, bounce pass, and it's stolen by Irish. Miller off the mark, rebound gross. Both teams aren't wasting much time in these possessions. They're going at it very quick. No, the Spartans don't need to force that ball inside. Now, there were three players guarding Eric on that one, so kick it out. Let's see if a jump shot might be the higher percentage shot. There's no shot clock either, so if you, if you see a lane in the fast break, go for it. But otherwise, you don't need to force it up. You can take as much time as you need. You've got to jump ball, and the position arrow will favor the Spartans. We got some footage of the senior recognition ceremony that took place before the game, so we'll run some of that for you at halftime. And getting the jumper is number 20, Hannah Lewisell. Getting a friendly bounce from the rim. Erica Miller driving. Too strong and picked up by Abby Brummer. Fears is open down court, can't handle the pass. Scramble, she picks it up. Trinity maintains possession, they are resetting. Gross surveying with O'Brien in her face. 
And not much there. Irish like, picks it up. Go like ahead. Trinity's got a distinct height, height advantage, so they are controlling the boards. They're just not shooting very well. So Spartans better box out better, or once Trinity starts hitting their shots, they're going to be in trouble. O'Brien for three. No good. That's a good hustle play by Hannah Johnson, and that will be the Spartans' ball. Irish and Gross tying it up. I can hear the labor breathing with those mics underneath the basket. This gives you an idea. I see Alexis Irish holding her hands to her waist. Uh, she's getting a little winded out there. Hands to the hips, usually a sign of fatigue. O'Brien can't get the bounce. Heard a little slap there, Mike. It can be tough sometimes to see what's going on when you've got so many players in one area. It's still 16 to 12 in favor of St. Paul Academy. We've been stuck at this score for some time. Brummer used up the dribble, has to get rid of it. There we go. Lewisell draws another foul. Oh, that looked like a jump ball to me, Mike, but we're gonna get Jonte Claiborne, I believe. And now St. Paul Academy out of fouls to give. You mentioned Trinity not very opportunistic at the free throw line, but they're gonna be in the bonus for the last 6.02, and they're only down by four. Lewisell, now three of seven. And can't get the bounce on either of them. Rebound Erica Miller. Let's see what the Spartans can do on this possession. Jenna O'Brien, bounce over to Miller. Claiborne, swish. Jonte Claiborne is on tonight. She's got that short range jumper going. Good movement though by Erica Miller. Took the ball inside and kicked it out. I should point this out, Trinity hosting Columbia Heights in section play. The winner of that game will play Minneapolis Washburn. Turnover by Trinity. Gross stepped on the out-of-bounds line, 524 left. And we've talked a lot about O'Brien. We've talked a lot about Johnson being the two leaders on this team. What, are, what else has some of the other players brought to this program? I know a lot of them are considering college, and uh, we've been, we mentioned O'Brien does a lot of other sports. What else do some of these seniors bring? Well, as we watch some action here, Mike, the seniors bring a lot of experience. They've been playing ball for three years, some of them, so. Miller wow. gets the bounce, and she will have to send a thank you card to the rim after that. Right. Erica's playing with a lot of confidence, and until they stop her, she's gonna keep attacking that basket. Very lighthearted bunch, too. I ran into them a little bit before the game, and I, it was Io Jones who asked me, do you have any jokes you're gonna use during the broadcast, like while the play's going on? And she was wondering if I had any one-liners up my sleeve. Yeah, they're trying to enjoy this season, Mike. Uh, the wins didn't happen like they thought they would, but they are playing their best basketball of the season at this time. They've won two games in a row. Uh, they can manage a win here. They've got some good momentum going into section. Big rebound there by Jonte Claiborne. Where they await Mounds Park Academy. That game will be here on Thursday. O'Brien tried to weave away through the hole. Miller kicks it out. That was close. O'Brien lines up the three, too strong. Claiborne, offensive rebound. And she's fouled. And that was the best thing that could happen to her. Didn't look like she was in the best position for a putback. But she's at the line and... Relax, too. We'll shoot a pair. Claiborne, a 5'8", sophomore center. Woo! 
gives her seven. If you're wondering why we're quiet during the free throws, this isn't a very large gym, as you can see. Claiborne works her way up to eight. Mike Jante's had her best half of the season. She is really taking her game to a new level tonight. That's exciting for the Spartans to see that. And she increases the St. Paul Academy run to 20 to five. Trinity was up 7-2. Volkman wanted to travel. And I like the other sign, kind of like the Gophers do or the Wolves or some of the other big level colleges, they have certain sections. I see one that reads Voltmer's Vandals. Erica Miller too strong, Jenna O'Brien, put back is good. Okay, the Spartans are getting some good second chance baskets on offense, Mike, and they're converting. And you have to like the Spartans finding scoring outside of Jenna O'Brien, who's the only player in double figures, so you figure Trinity and other opponents will be keen on Jenna, who's part of a line of talented O'Brien sisters as Brunner is fouled. Miller has eight. She averages just 6.8 per season. And you talked about Claiborne, 2.3 points per game coming into tonight. Well, she's definitely a lot of players are going to be leaning on next season. She'll have two varsity years of experience on, under her belt. And Jonka Flisch will have some decisions to make as number 33 just picked up her third foul. No, oh, wait, that's St. Paul Academy. What am I thinking? Yeah, that's John Dante Claiborne. <laughs> Someone needs to pinch me. Brummer with the back end. It's a 24-13 game in favor of the Spartans. General O'Brien can't drive around Lewisell, so she hands off to Miller. Spartans kick it outside. I'll tell you one thing I'd like to see, Mike, I'd like to see SBA set some more screens. Seems like the players are really moving on their own. There's a basket and a foul. O'Brien will go to the line for a three-point play, and I've noticed with her game, she... Actually, must have been a, no, must off. Have been a travel. You're right. So it stays 24-13, but with O'Brien, I've noticed she almost lines up for a three as a fake trying to draw the defense off and look for a lane inside. Nice basket by Trinity. That's Eric Ruth Gross. She has six. Trinity looking for some kind of spark plug. Maggie Johnson. Wipe that basket Maggie. away too. She needed one more dribble and got excited. Committed the turnover and the travel. She hasn't scored tonight and I know she's maybe a little eager to get some points on the board. And so two St. Paul Academy baskets wiped away by traveling calls. Rose for three. It didn't look like it was lined up properly. And just over two minutes to play here. Again, the last game of the season for both schools. Quick turnaround to section play. John Flish said, you know, didn't originally have St. Paul Academy planned on the schedule, but made the accommodation so they could have their senior night here. And it gives them one more chance to prepare as well. Maggie Johnson's three is a little strong, and she gets her own rebound. They just bounce right to her. She didn't even have to follow it. But the Spartans getting some offensive boards, getting some second chance looks. Some, they're showing some good patience here, Mike. Oh, there's an ill-advised pass by Jenna. Kublik with the steal, but she can't haul it in, and she trips up. She does find Gross, and Gross can't score. But Trinity had a fast break opportunity wiped away. O'Brien. Interesting to see her now. She, last time I saw her, in a Spartans uniform as Erica Miller breaks double digits. I believe she was five foot seven. And now she's listed at six feet. Thirty-eight seconds. 
And St. Paul Academy up 26-15. And O'Brien with the steal. Johnson was looking for O'Brien, does find her. O'Brien rises out to the corner. The Spartans can't hold for the final shot if they wish. Miller's not going to wait that long. Alexis Ibridge with the offensive rebound and the putback. And no need to wait that long. Irish with four. And Trinity may not have, will they have time for another shot? That is it. And it falls short from Hannah Lewis though, but a strong first half by the Spartans. They lead 28 to 15. And fueled by strong performances out of Erica Miller and Jonte Claiborne, two players you normally don't think of. Definitely a spark, Mike. They have really stepped up their game tonight. They've got an inside presence against a tall team. So Spartans are doing well. We'll take a break, come back with the second half. But before we do, we're going to show you some footage from the senior night recognition where the Spartans got to honor their heavy senior core. Season. 
Welcome back to High School Girls Basketball on TSB Television as we continue our coverage of St. Paul Academy and Trinity at River Ridge. I'm Mike Peden. Michael Johnson will be joining me shortly. Let's take a look at the first half stats. Leading the way. Leading the way for the Spartans, Erica Miller with 10 points, Jonte Claiborne with eight, Alexis Irish and Jenna O'Brien with four, Barry Applebaum with two, Maggie Johnson yet to score. And for Trinity, not a lot of scoring. They only had 15 points. Leading the way is Ruth Gross with six, but they have shut her down so far. The St. Paul Academy defense is. Hannah Lewisell and Abby Brummer both have a tray. Becky Fierce has one, but not much scoring in the way of the Trinity at River Ridge. Trinity wearing the white jerseys, St. Paul Academy wearing the blue jerseys. Last game of the regular season, both schools will be starting section play. On Thursday, and there's Maggie Johnson, and she finally gets her first field goal. Comes just as we start the second half. We mentioned a couple of the seniors unable to play. Io Jones, Adam Ainsley Jr., so she'll be back. As we mentioned earlier, suffered an ankle sprain. Jenna O'Brien with the steal. And an all-around solid effort by the Spartans in the first 18 minutes. Until that happened, I just jinxed him. There's a turnover. They haven't turned the ball over too many times, Mike. But Barry thought she was going one way, and she cut the other. And if you looked at the key matchup between O'Brien and Gross, Gross with six, O'Brien with four, you might think St. Paul Academy is struggling, but as I mentioned with the scoring recap, Miller with 10 points, Claiborne with eight points, she only averages 2.3 a game. Jump ball, and crashing to the floor is Brummer, and Trinity has the possession arrow. So the Spartans getting a lot of scoring from players that normally don't put up a lot of points, and that is always helpful when winning basketball games. Good defense by the Spartans. Uh, look at the position of Alexis Irish right there to finish up. Irish with six points. And this is a crazy run put up by SPA. 30 to eight. It was all Trinity in the first few minutes and since then SPA has taken over. Oh, good idea. Erica Miller was looking to get it inside to Maggie, just got tipped. Pass is deflected by Trinity. Now, were you there when O'Brien reached 1,000 points? I was, Mike, and she did it in style. She hit a three-pointer. And a timeout call by John Flish with 16.31 left. Trinity down 34-15 in St. Paul Academy. Scoring on the first three possessions. We spoke of Jenna O'Brien, it was a three-pointer. And during that game we mentioned with Como Park, I think your brother got an interview with her which will run. We're gonna dig deep into our archives. That was my first season calling the game, so we'll run that for you. Well, we're here with an underclassman, you could say that, for St. Paul Academy, Jenna O'Brien, Jenna, seventh grader. How'd you end up on the varsity here in seventh grade? Um, well, my sister's on the varsity, and I just decided to try out this year and see what happens. So, so tell me, last year you were playing sixth grade. What's been the biggest adjustment from sixth grade basketball to high school varsity? Um, it's a lot more aggressive, more my size. So I'm a little tall for seventh grade. Um, just fun more, I guess. How have your teammates accepted you? Obviously, you're dealing with kids a lot older. Um, they've accepted me well because I was on varsity soccer, so it works out well. So. Tell us a little bit about your team. How are you guys doing? We're doing pretty well. Um, we've lost to a few big schools in our conference. We've won two out of, I don't really know, like four, I think. So we're doing pretty well. And what are your goals personally for this year? Probably to get more aggressive for my size, my age. So people watching at home, what do they need to do to be able to play varsity basketball in seventh grade? You've obviously been playing for a long time. Tell us just a little bit about your, your background. Um, I've been playing since I was in kindergarten. Um, I played traveling when I was in fourth grade, AAU season during the summer. I don't know, just play your heart out. Okay, best of luck tonight. Thanks. All right, there you have it. General Bryant, a seventh grade starter for St. Paul Academy. 
Where'd you get that? Yeah, I'm sure she was a wide-eyed seventh grader, possibly eighth grader. Uh, it was when she was seventh grade. Wow. First time I'd seen a seventh grader on the roster. That does happen on occasion. Players competing in varsity ball early. You can do that starting in seventh grade, and that's how players like Taylor Hill and Rebecca Dolman put up the big numbers they do. But you mentioned it was a three-pointer. Do you recall when it was and she what the was? She scored in the first half, and there was uh, a lot of excitement. Obviously, uh, her teammates were excited for her. Her parents were there. She uh, gave her parents the, the game ball at the time. So very exciting moment for Jenna. Unfortunately, the Spartans lost. Do you, do you remember who it was against? They were playing visitation. One of the tri-metro foes, if I'm correct. It's a nice drive and a basket. That's Hannah Lewis uh, with the first field goal. And that's a good karma play from Trinity, scoring off of a timeout call. Applebaum launches a three, but too strong. And a dead ball rebound to the Hawks. Barry is the spark plug for the Spartans. She's the quickest player, she's the point guard, she dishes the ball, but she can hit the three. She hit a couple her last game, so she'll try to get that shot back. And Trinity getting a couple baskets there. That's Becky Fears with her first field goal after Brummer was too strong on the layup attempt. You know, right in front of us, Mike, Spartans were not in good position. They did not box out, and that was an easy four-point run for Trinity. No foul called, so that pays off for Erica Miller. Looked like an elbow, but I don't wear the zebra stripes. So I give the benefit of the doubt to the officials all the time. Applebaum with the steal. SPN a fast break here. Pulls up, no good. Oh, unfortunately, Barry short-armed it and called for the reach over foul. But the Spartans still have a 17-point lead with 15-15 remaining. With the fadeaway is Ruth Gross. She has eight. Yeah. Trinity is going to have to get her going a bit. I spoke with John Kofish about that. Well, hold on. Traveling violation on Maggie Johnson. Gross, the huge influence on offense. Plays through a lot of pain for the Hawks. It's a very strong defender. Great score. And you just have to like that she won't be tweaked by a minor injury like other players can be affected. Good defense by the Spartans. And it pays off for Barry Applebaum. And a reach-in foul is called on 21. That is... Maria Stephenson. Yes. And as is the key with any team for John Kaflish as he gets through that first season with Trinity. Where they're hosting a section game regardless of what happens here, jump ball. SPA keeps it. Went through his first season. I'm sure he'll evaluate what he needs for next year and try to get some more attention. Look at that inbounds play for Maggie Johnson. She has four points now. You said Johnson has started every game since she was a sophomore? Mike, she is the Cal Ripken of SPA girls basketball. She has started every game since her sophomore year. So I'm not sure how many other players have that record. A lot of things happen in the high school basketball season. But if you can stay healthy, and in some cases, if you're a very dynamic player, you can record a lot of starts. As I mentioned, Rebecca Dahlman, another Class 2A member, has oh. done that for, you've got a foul on Trinity. Good drive to the basket by Maggie, and she was fouled. Dahlman comes to mind. Well, Taylor Hill over at Minneapolis South, who scored th 3,888 points. Uh, some of the other stars. Uh, then and now, Jessica January and Drew General O'Brien would have had a similar streak if she didn't get hurt last year. 
It's 38-23 in favor of the Spartans. Staying healthy is key, and Maggie Johnson certainly the benefit of that. And a nice move around the block by Becky Fears and Trinity getting a few baskets here. They are, Mike. That was about positioning. They had the right inside position, and drawing the foul is Johnson. Yeah, Spartans got to play tougher defensively because Trinity's taken the ball to the basket, and they do have a size advantage. St. Paul Academy can't rest in the laurels, even though they're up by 13. Nikki Johnson not finding a stroke from the free throw line tonight. Yeah, it's surprising, Mike. She had a game against St. Croix Lutheran. She was 9 for 10. See if she can knock this down. Only even the greatest of free throw shooters have their struggles. So Lindsay Whalen for the Minnesota Lynx, one example. Dropped 16% from 2010 to 2011. Of course, no one really talks about that because they won the WNBA championship. But uh, another player that comes to mind is Kiara Buford. And the foul. Looks like John Tay's going to pick up her fourth foul, Mike. And that is crucial for the inside game of the St. Paul Academy. And count the basket for Hannah Lewisell. And so after that big 30 to 8 run by the Spartans, we're seeing the Hawks put together a surge. Swish and the three-point play is successful. Lewisell with eight. About at her average now. We've got substitution into the game, Mike. Number 32 for the Spartans, Katie Adamite. And number 10, Sarah Romans. In for Maggie Johnson and I believe Barry Applebaum. Their first appearance in the game. And Adamite is short on the bunny. Play Fears. Trinity has cut this lead to 10. If they get a basket here, Spartans might want to think about a timeout. Gross is short. Offensive and rebound and the putback by 31, Olivia Moss. Yeah, the lead is cut to eight. And, and there's the timeout that you predicted. That's a good timeout, Mike. They've got to regroup. Trinity is getting the ball inside, and the Spartans are not getting into position to combat that. Hawks have scored the last nine points unanswered with 12-19 left in the second. Now, do you know what's next for these players? Obviously, they have the section game, but whenever their season ends, they're still going to have a few months of school left, so what's going to be the mood like for some of those players like Johnson and uh, O'Brien here at the St. Paul Academy campus? I think they'll be excited, Mike, because it's spring break around the corner. They'll be thinking of warmer climates where they're going to go. Like where your brother is. Yeah, if they're lucky, they get to go there. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he would love to be here at this point as oh, we've got Katie Adamite and Johnson. They're trying to fix the banner up for Erica Miller. It looks like it's ready to fall off the bleachers. All right, that was a nice run by Trinity. Every good basketball team has to withstand runs and start one of their own. So let's see if the Spartans can get back on the scoreboard. It's been a very dis heavily discussed point with the switch to halves years ago that it turns these games into heavier influence by runs. Jenna O'Brien fouls Lewisell. The corners not so much because you have more stoppages in play with the halves you have more opportunities for these scoring runs, and that's why you hear the old adage, basketball is a game of runs. We saw the St. Paul Academy post a big one, and now Trinity is turning the tables. The foul is O'Brien's first. And Lewisell working her way up. It's a non-conference game. Lewis all up to 10, so this won't affect anything, but both schools have some things to improve on, but you have to like the runs they're putting on and just the fact that, well, Trinity didn't buckle 
when they were down by 17 points. It's not helping Anna Voltmer's case, but this gives St. Paul Academy one last test before section play begins. Erica Miller a little too strong on the mid-range, Jay. Johnson had the rebound, now she gets fed one more time. And the turnaround, Jay, is a little to the right. Number 15 in the game, that's Gabby Stark for the Hawks. As we mentioned, Kaflish said Trinity starts to struggle as he has to tap into his JV players. Jenna O'Brien weaves her way through. You know, Mike, just looking at the Trinity defense, it looks like it's wide open in the middle. They need to attack the basket. Jenna O'Brien with six. Gross. No. Stark with an offensive board. And she gets the pull up. I believe Hannah Johnson just fell. Yeah, that was and that, that was created a lucky opportunity break for Trinity because Hannah was right there. And we're back to a six-point game. That Fears was, trying to anticipate the pass. Yeah, that was an ill-advised pass by Jenna. Luckily, it went out of bounds. SBA's possession. Oh, and there's a turnover. Stark with the steal. I will say this, I do like being down here a lot more than in that little cubby hole that's above us. Drawing a foul is Lewis Hill. It's gonna go on Miller. I'll say this, Lewis Hill is finding a way to get to the free throw line. Yeah, she's doing what you need to do, Mike. She is attacking the basket. John Kaflish mentioned pressing as one of the keys to the game, and Trinity certainly pressing on the offensive side. And Lewis L taking advantage. But like we talked about in the first half, when your leading scorer isn't getting a lot of touches and a lot of opportunities, it, to, it goes to the other players to step up. It becomes their task, and Lewis L doing that now for Trinity, much like Miller and Claiborne were for St. Paul Academy in the first half. All right, let's see what the Spartans can do here now. Oh, there's another turnover. Barry Applebaum wished she could have that pass back. And Trinity has a chance to make this a one possession game. They're down by five with 10.40 to go and eternity in basketball time. Gross, pull up, yes! And another timeout. This time it's called by Kaflish, whose team is down by three points. They were down by 17, and it looked like SP was gonna run them out of the building. And now a huge run by the Hawks. How does St. Paul Academy put a stop to this? Well, Mike, that's basketball. You've gotta answer a run and give Trinity credit. They've tried to change their attacking the basket. So SPA needs to answer and, and play their game, but they are, uh, being satisfied with, with shooting some outside shots and not attacking the basket like I think they can. So we'll see if they can turn it up here. And they've got to get some scoring and some leadership from Maggie Johnson and hopefully Jen O'Brien will kick up her game as well. And you mentioned the le leadership or the lazy passes in the last few possessions that have led to turnovers. And Trinity is now starting to anticipate them. Official yep. having a word with Erica Miller just explaining the inbound procedure. And that's something I want to point out. It's nice to see officials who do that so the players can learn. Even as seniors, as Irish will be heading to the line for a pair, even as seniors, officials just explaining what the rules are so the players understand how the game works. Oh, that's quite a routine there from Alexis Irish. Yeah, she wants to soften that ball up. Helps her shot, it works, keep doing it. She's not careful, she may put a dent on the floor. Maybe she's taking some of that anger out uh, during that Trinity run of the ball. I've never seen a warm up like that. Guess what, Mike, it works. <laughs> of course, she gets both. Two swishes. Great shot by Alexis. And a collision, blocking foul on Applebaum. Oh, that's... I think that's her fourth, Mike. That's gonna be trouble for the Spartans. Yes. So you have Applebaum with four, Claiborne with four, Jenna O'Brien's gotta go back in. Applebaum only two points tonight, but 
when you're in foul trouble, you're not going to get many opportunities. You know, the Spartans need to start setting screens, and the game will open up for them. They're doing a lot on their own. They've got some great baskets, but watch how Trinity works together. Top of the key, Gross can't get the tray. Rebound, Marley Applebaum, possession arrow goes to SPA. Trinity. Actually, or, Trinity. Yes, Trinity. Now I'm getting my directions crossed. Of course it's Trinity. And Gross with a tough turnaround. That is no good. O'Brien looking for Miller, does find her. And SPA will sit up in the half court. Miller left alone, but goes inside the stead to Irish, oh, and I see why. Great pass by Erica Miller. Alexis Irish converts the basket. And SPA pulls her lead back up to seven. They were down to three, and there's a traveling call. And Maggie Johnson, I think, took an inadvertent elbow. Good defense by Maggie. Draws the turnover. You can you can jump once, but you cannot jump twice. Marley Applebaum over to Maggie Johnson. Too strong. Applebaum can't save it in time. 44-37, it's clutch time for one of these schools. Who will prevail? SB is hoping they will. They could use one last boost. They're coming into this game at 7-16. and 16. Trinity would like to get one step closer to 500. Oh. And Luisel going to the free throw line again. Mike, it should be no surprise. This Louis Hell is going to drive the basket. Don't let her get the baseline. That should be the discussion from the Spartans. Louis Hell, 5'4", sophomore. And is finding her stroke from the free throw line. She struggled early, hitting just three of six. Had a couple of field goals, and now she's worked her way up. As the Briggs Gymnasium falls eerily silent. One time on the rim. Very quiet. You think they'd be noisy when the other team is shooting, but they're very respectful here at SBA. Lewis uh, with the Baker's dozen. I've noticed that at other gymnasiums as well in high school basketball, even when the visiting team is at the line, fans really don't get that loud in girls basketball. They're a very respectful bunch. In some respects, we have a foul on Trinity. In some respects, a girls basketball game sometimes is like going to a golf outing or a tournament. Not a lot of heckling, not a lot of trash talk, smack talk. It's watch the game, enjoy the game, and we'll go out to dinner later. Well, too bad Alexis can convert that shot. Let's see if they can get a stop on Trinity. They're working on it. Scramble, and that will go be to SBA ball. SBA ball. You're right, because number 14, Kelly Kuplick, stepped on the out-of-bounds line trying to retrieve it. 44-39. SPA was up by 17. Trinity has trimmed that lead to three. And they'll get a chance to do so again. You know, Mike, they're trying to force the ball. If it's not there, SPA should be patient. Work it around. Look for the open person. Just over eight to play in the last regular season game. Jump ball. SPA possession and John Kaflish very adamant about what he expects out of his Trinity team. Well, you can hear him barking over here. 
What do you think? That's something I've covered a lot of basketball over the years. If you go to a game involving De La Salle, their head coach, Faith Johnson-Patterson, very vocal. And even at some handling games I did this year. A beautiful drive by Jenna O'Brien. She has eight points. Finish up that point. I was at the scores table, so I'm next to the coaches, but you could hear what they were saying with a clear, audible tone. And we've got a foul on SPA. I couldn't quite see it from the same on Alexis Irish. You know, Trinity definitely has a height advantage on the boards, Mike, so Spartans got a box out. Age old instructions. That will send Abby Brummer to the line. And while there's still a lot of time left, 7.31. Trinity is in the bonus for the remainder of this game, which they could use to their advantage because if they draw fouls, they stop the clock and have a chance to put up points. That's another turnover on the Spartans. O'Brien just, oh, just seems to be a little off target with the passes. They're trying to go over the top. You know, for some give and goes here, but that's a tough, tough pass. Especially with the tall lineup of Trinity compared to SBA. It gives them additional chances. And those possessions may not look pretty. And in and out from Becky Fierce. Rebound by Marley Applebaum. This time they work their way inside, and it pays off for Erica Miller, who has 14 points. She's definitely determined. She just takes that baseline and will not be denied. Lewis L won't be denied either, and go figure. She draws another foul. She's going to get more free throws. Second foul on Jenna O'Brien. And as the fouls pile up, that only helps Trinity again, stopping the clock, giving them a chance to catch their breath giving them an opportunity to put up more points on the board, but she leaves the front end short. Now, not to compare the two, but I know St. Paul Academy, not the strongest of records. Coming into section play, you... But do you think they have an Anoka type run in them? I know that was the big story of last year. Anoka, two regular season wins, and they punched their way to the 4A state tournament bracket. You never know, Mike, what can happen. Just look at the NFL, obviously. Last year with the <laughs> Green Bay Packers, this year the New York Giants. It's not how you start a season, it's how you finish. Oh, Peggy Johnson and one. Well, even at this level, there was some examples. St. Paul Central, when they won the 2008 state tournament, they certainly were not the favorites to win it. Let's see if Maggie can get her shooting touch back and convert this three-point play. Found it in that possession, and St. Paul Academy pushes the lead back up to 10. After Trinity had trimmed it to three. Gross, in trouble, and not in good position was Kelly Kuplick. Good defense by the Spartans. A lot of help defense there. If you're SPA, when do you start considering to kill the clock? I don't think you can kill the clock, Mike. There's too much time left. They've got to continue to run their offense, attack the basket. New players stepping in for Trinity. Actually, that's Becky Fears is going back in. And Ruth Gross will be subbed out. Someone's. Erica Miller short on the fadeaway. And fouled is Abby Brummer. And again, Trinity in the bonus. It's a one and one, but Brummer will have the chance to put points on the board with the clock stopped. Mike, Erica's had a great game, but she's got to recognize when you've got three people on you, kick it outside. That was a right, tough, tough shot. Very tough. Right. 
Front end is good for Brummer. She now has five. How many free throws has Trinity attempted today? They've been to the line a lot. It helps when you're in the bonus, and they've been drawing a lot of shooting fouls. We talked about Lewisell driving a lot, SPA. Not on their defensive assignments. You make contact, and the officials are going to get you 99% of the time if you do. It's a nine-point lead for the Spartans under six minutes to play. Jenna O'Brien weaves her way through again. Well, that's the best way to score. Take it to the basket and score on a layup. High percentage. O'Brien with 10. Yeah, next foul by the Spartans. Trinity will be in the double bonus, so they've got to play good defense. And Gross now has a dozen. I hear hustle play. So SPA not going to back off their tempo. O'Brien, well, she wants to shoot that three real bad. But she's not going to force it. There it is, layup, Erica Miller. And that's why Jenna O'Brien will not force it. Erica Miller, strong game for the senior. You mentioned her season high is 18. Gross, I thought there was contact, but the officials let it go. There's a steal. Not quite. Fierce picks it up and turns a broken play into a pair. Tough break. SPA had that. Good bounce for Trinity. They're within nine. And Fierce with nine. Maggie Johnson. Now she'll be shooting. Lucky to draw the blocking foul. I mean, from my vantage point. Well, the other player's feet were not set, so it was... Right, um, that, they weren't set, but... It was, it was close, you know. Maybe Johnson could have been take for the elbow, but she's making the most of it. Both teams in the bonus now with 424 in regulation. Erica Miller coming into this game, 6.8 points per game. And Johnson working her way up to nine. At this rate, I may end up having to talk to the entire senior core. As they're starting to come up big late in the second. Miller and O'Brien set a few baskets, and Maggie Johnson finding some rhythm late at a crucial time. There's Ruth Gross. Oh, good defense. And Trinity retains possession. Couldn't see the signal from here, but that doesn't wipe away the strong double team from St. Paul Academy taking the shot away from Gross. Little bounce pass. And Gross with a oh, tough shot, and she was foul. bailed out by the foul. Too bad. I don't think she was going to make that, but Mike, this game's going to come down to free throws like we talked about earlier. It's attacking the basket. Now Trinity's in the double bonus. Well, with the Hawks down by 11, the foul is on Miller, her third. Trinity's going to need some stops. Number 31 into the game for Trinity. That's Olivia Moss. Gross with 13. There, I just saw a good screen set by Jonte Claiborne. That's good basic basketball. Let's see if the Spartans can take time off the clock. Barry Applebaum also, together. also back in with four fouls, but Anna Voltmer knows she's got to put her best players on the floor at this critical point in the timeline. Scramble for the ball. And they were going to call timeout, but not this time. And SPA may look to kill some clock now. They're up by 10. We're in the closing minutes now. Absolutely. And good, good, good idea. They're just going to play some keep back away. Door, back door and a layup. Back door is open. Maggie Johnson says, I'll go in. And she has 12. 11. She has double digits either way. Gross. No bullseye. Rebound, Barry Applebaum. And St. Paul Academy 
appearing to have a win locked up. O'Brien looking to Applebaum, bounce pass over to Miller, Beautiful and that play. should do it. Miller with 18 points. You think she's player of the game? She's had a phenomenal game. But Mike, I give credit. Barry Applebaum on that play, very unselfish basketball, made the beautiful pass. And the Trinity fans applauding Hannah Lewisell. And she's had a strong game too, 16 points. Just didn't quite get the support that SPA has had. Four of their players in double figures. We're finally getting some noise in this gym. Thank you, Trinity fans. Who would have thought it would be the Trinity fans giving some noise? I miss those big crazies that we had last year. The silly bunch of folks. Applebaum, oh. short on the three, but with less than two minutes to go. That may be of little consequence for St. Paul Academy because oh. Trinity's got to score quick. Never know. There's a basket and the foul. And who else? Hannah Lewisell with another and one. What a game for the sophomore. I think SPA's got to be disciplined. Just run time off the clock. Time's your friend. And they're in the bonus, so they can make Trinity play foul and chase here. And no matter what happens for Trinity, you've got to like what Hannah Lewisell could bring for future seasons as, again, uh, Flish will have another year to implement his system and try to build up. Trinity not known as a basketball powerhouse before he came in, and he said it's something to at least host a section game. May not be much, but you have to take those steps as they come. And the same thing with SPA. All right, Spartans, Spartans, by the flesh. Spartans, Spartans are pulling some of their starters. I don't know if it might be premature. They're going to be falling and sending them to the line. Not quite. They're up by nine with 148 left, so they're still in strong position to win this game, but not ready to put a check mark in the win column yet. Uh, SPA is going to be graduating a lot of the seniors. We've been talking a lot about them tonight. So for someone like Anna Voltmer, what does she do to look ahead for future seasons? So she's going to have some players like Adamite, who will be back next year. You have Alexis Irish, who's had a pretty decent game in the post tonight. She has 12 points. Jonte Claiborne. They, She's a sophomore, so they've, they've got a, blocks. They've got a good, strong JV program. I think they actually have a winning record this year. They're well coached. There's some good young talent coming up, plus a lot of these sophomores. Hannah Johnson, Jonte, Alexis uh, are all coming back, along with Lauren Adamite, who is a two-year starter. I wonder if I'll be getting requests from your brother next year then, since there will still be a Johnson in the roster. Look at that fast break move, and Jenna O'Brien is the recipient of the layup. That's the danger of a full court press. Yeah, we got SPA it. breaks it, and, and an easy bucket. We've got a turnover by Trinity. She stepped over the line. It is Spartan's ball. 63-52. Going to say with that JV program, the, the best thing about some of those younger players, they get older. And they get better. And Trinity forced to play a foul and chase here. That'll send Jenna O'Brien to the line. SPA in the bonus. Mike, and speaking about the JV program, there's also a player, Maddie Hansen. She transferred from visitation, but because of the transfer rule, she could not play. So she's an experienced player. She'll be a senior next year. They definitely got some depth coming up on that team. Uh, Minnie Arnold is a strong player. Again, a young, young team. So there's a, definitely a resurgence here at SPA. O'Brien missed the front end. So Trinity still not out of this just yet. They leave Gabby Stark alone. And again, the full court press is going to come from Trinity. They have to try to get stops now. And a foul that will send Sarah Romans to the line. will make the newspaper tomorrow. 
And even though SPA may not be a winning program compared to the likes of Providence Academy or Bram or Minnehaha Academy, you got to start somewhere, and sometimes records do not always indicate the strength or even just the quality of a program. And sometimes, as you pointed out, they still have fun. Gross almost got it off the glass. Absolutely, Mike. If they win this game tonight, it looks like they're on their way. That'll be their third win in a row. They've definitely got some momentum going, and they're playing some good basketball. So we'll see what they can do in the sections. You never know. And even so, you just have to like that they're a fun bunch. The, the, the biggest thing with high school sports is understanding that records tell very little about the opportunities and the lessons you can get from participating in basketball or another sport, as in the case with General O'Brien, who plays in soccer during the fall. O'Brien may take some extra reps at the free throw line, though, during a practice tomorrow. Again, SPA just one day off. Yeah, one day off, and they host another ball game. And that will be against Mounds Park Academy. Double bonus here for the Spartans. So we'll see if Erica Miller can get to 20. Adding to her total, perhaps, she has 18 on the night. This is her first trip to the charity stripe. And a lot of bricks as of late. That's keeping Trinity in this, but not by much. Trinity's going to have to score quick. Gross with a tough fadeaway shot. And another timeout. Again, SPA still in good position, but got to sweat a few more seconds. I give Trinity credit. They're not giving up. They've battled the whole game. This coach is using his timeouts. If SPA continues to miss free throws, you have a chance, always have a chance. Even though the clock doesn't stop, at this level, you never can rule out anything. We've seen some strange things. It was a Hamlin women's game in particular. It was against uh, Gustavus. Hamlin was up by six points with 17 seconds. And Gustavus makes two three-pointers in that time span to force overtime, and they win the game. One of the many collapses from the female Pipers this season. And that just goes to show you as Hubie Brown would put it, it's never over in basketball. Absolutely not. 48 seconds left. We'll try to get a word with an SPA player or two, or you know, maybe the whole, maybe the whole senior group. <laughs> They've been coming up big tonight. O'Brien, Johnson, Miller. Okay, one more turn over here. This game is going to get very interesting. Claiborne gets the inbounds off, and again, the fast break pays off for Katie Adamite. Trinity running full court, and again, that's a danger. You leave that space open. Yeah, for well, the quick. well done, well executed. Beautiful basket by Katie. Ruth Gross misses, and I think SPA can breathe a little easier now. 25 seconds left. Gross launches a three. That Good. falls short. Good box out by Marley Applebaum. I saw a little elbow there. Lucky she didn't get called for the foul. 15 seconds, and SPA has got this win locked up now. 11 seconds left. A strong effort by SPA. That big 30-8 to eight run was simply too much for Trinity. And the Spartans will end their season winning the last three games. And that will give them some good momentum as they get ready to host Mounds Park Academy on Thursday. Winner of that game plays Mini Ha Ha Academy. But for now, the seniors will enjoy their win. One more basket for Kelly Kuplick. That's her first and only score of the game. But the basket is a mood point, 66-58 the final. SPA wins its third straight game to end the regular season. Good win for the Spartans, Mike. This was a game of momentum. Trinity started out really hot. They had a 7-0 lead. Spartans came back, had a big run, and Trinity didn't give up. They kept clawing their way back, but a good win for SPA.
We'll try to get a word with some of the SPA players in a moment. You're watching high school girls basketball here on TSB television. Mike Pete in here, and we decided we're just going to bring the entire senior core out here, even though some of them couldn't get to play like Io Jones. Like you had that knee injury, but uh, you got to start tonight, and you've been a, a very active member of this team. So what does it mean to win your last game in the regular season? Because you host one more on Thursday. Well, I felt really lucky to be able to get on the team um, on the floor with my teammates, and I was just really happy that we pulled out with the W. Well, I'm sure it was still lucky that you were able to uh, play for this team for so long. Yeah, I mean, these are my girls. And Jenna O'Brien, the last time we talked to you on camera, you were in seventh grade, and uh, you had, were, hadn't hit your growth spurt yet. Now you have over 1,000 points to your credit. Just what does that mean about your long career here for the Spartans? <laughs> um, Very funny career, isn't it? I don't know. I put a lot of time in, and it was rewarding getting my 1,000th point this year. So. And just how does that uh, build on for Nick? <laughs> How does that, how does that build? What are you making fun of her for? <laughs> what? I was going to say, what are you laughing at her for? She scored over a thousand points. Do you imagine where you'd be without her? You just give this player some credit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's awkward. So how do you use that to build on the next phase of your career? Um, well, I don't, I don't plan on playing. <laughs> well, in life, you don't. Oh my God. Okay, just go on. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move on to Maggie Johnson while she recollects herself and, uh, We've talked to you a couple of times, and uh, you've started this game, or started for the Spartans since you were a sophomore, and so just tell me about the secret to your longevity. Um, well, <laughs> did I actually stop? Um, well, it's been nice to play for the Spartans for two years, or four years, but two years starting, or three years. Um, but I think, especially in this game, we've really come together and gained composure, and as a team, we have shown, like, us five seniors especially have shown leadership this year, and it's been nice. And one key, is laughter is certainly the best medicine, as I'm uh, getting an example of in these last couple minutes. Yes, we laugh a lot. We have fun. And Erica Miller, you had a lot of fun tonight, 18 points. You normally get 6.8 coming into this game, and uh, you really found your groove tonight. What was your secret? Um, when you work hard and when you want to achieve something, it's pretty, it's pretty achievable. And I came into this game thinking that I was going to rock and thinking that I was going to get a lot of boards and a lot of points, and that's what it happened. And Barry Applebaum, another one of these seniors, as we have some excited Trinity fans uh, cheering us on, giving us some support. Barry, how would you describe your time in the Spartan Blue and Gold? Um, I've had fun as a Spartan basketball player. I'm sad to leave, so. So what do you have to say for the underclassmen that are uh, going to take over next year? I'd say just keep working hard and be positive. And so what's next for you? Where are you uh, headed after this? Um, I'm going to University of Wisconsin-Madison. So. Oh, going to the Badgers, huh? You're going to be playing for them or are you just studying? What, do you have a major uh, planned out? Um, no, I don't know. Well, you've got plenty of time. And what about you? Where are you headed? I do not know yet. Somewhere on the East Coast. East Coast. Well, a lot of uh, sun and a lot of beach and a lot of uh, fun out there. What about you, Maggie? I hear you're heading to Boston University? Yes, I'm going to Boston University. So you're going to check out any Red Sox games over at Fenway? Or? Yes, Red Sox versus the Twins, but rooting for the Twins. Well, at least your allegiances will not change. And uh, where are you headed? UCLA, hopefully. Hopefully? So you, are you uh, waiting to hear from the acceptance? Uh, well, so good luck to that. I know it would be a lot of fun to go out there in the land uh, where Troy Aikman made his, uh, started his career. And then Kevin Love. Kevin Love, that's right, of the Timberwolves. And what about you? Where are you headed? Um, as of right now, I'm undecided, but I know I'll be someplace that makes me happy. And I'm going to be going to college. That narrows down the list uh, considerably, <laughs> but uh, the key is you're going to be happy and you're going to college. So if you've got those two down, you're pretty good. Yep. Yes. And anything you want to say to anyone that might be watching? Anybody you want to say hi to? Hello to my cousin Lynn, uh, my cousin Amari, and my dad, my brothers Utalo and Pleiku. Shout out to Miller family, Johnson family, <laughs> Applebaum family, O'Brien family. What about you? My dad. <laughs> well, I'm sure your dad would like to hear that. What about your older sister? She was a Spartan. It's okay. It's okay, okay. <laughs> well, who would you like to say hi to? I would like to say hi to my grandparents and my brother who's at Indiana University right now and wasn't able to come tonight. Oh, and what about you, Erica? My family, my siblings. And who do you want to give a shout-out to, Barry? 
I'll give a shout out to Maddie Flamstab. She's watching right now. And Maddie Hansen. Yep. Well, you may not be the Briggs crazies, but you certainly have given me a very comical moment. And thanks, congratulations on your win, and uh, good luck in sections. You never know. You saw what Anoka did last year. You could end up in the state tournament. Watch us. Just watch us. Watch. We will. We will. Okay. So that's the senior core as we get a look at some of the excited Trinity fans that have paid a visit. One more shout out and one more congratulations to the senior group at St. Paul Academy. Michael, a very strong finish for the St. Paul Academy Spartans, and what does winning the last three games do for their confidence as they get ready to host Mount Spark Academy in two days? I think it was a, a great confidence booster, Mike, to, to finish the season with three wins. Not only the three wins, they've played well their last six games. They've played Providence Academy, who's one of the best teams in the state. They played them tough for part of the first half. St. Croix Lutheran, probably one of the best basketball games I've seen SPA play. And they've built off that momentum. So to get three wins going into sections is huge for SPA. And like we talked about earlier, it's not how you start a season, it's how you finish. And SPA is, seems to be on a little roll right now. And how about Erica Miller stepping up big? Focus is on Jenna O'Brien, and sometimes it rests on other players to come up with big performances, and that's exactly what Erica Miller did tonight. Definitely. Erica Miller and Jonte Claiborne were key to this game. They really stepped it up, and it shows the versatility of SPA that it's not just Jenna O'Brien and Maggie Johnson doing the scoring, but other players can pick up the slack as well. Well, that does it from here. Thank you, Michael Johnson, for Thank you. visiting us. And SPA comes out with a 66-58 win to close the regular season. Section play begins from here, and that's when things really heat up on the road to the state tournament. For everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for watching.